It's really great to have an opportunity to come here today and share my story. Um, I hope that the things that I can share with you today, particularly for those of you that are about to embark on or thinking about going down this journey to join an exclusive club, the things today might help um, alleviate some of your anxiety and reframe it into some emerging confidence because it is a good journey to go on and as we heard from Tommy, the outcomes are really worthwhile. What I propose to do is show uh, a bit of a presentation and then at the end I've done sort of the ultimate selfie. Throughout my journey I took a, a, a video journal, every day just a little bit of a clip because I thought to be able to show you exactly what's going on when you're in hospital through this way is a really good way to give you that insight as to what goes on. I don't want you to be confronted by it because it shows some great improvements. There's a few days that you're flat out, as Tom says, the fatigue level is probably one of the most monstrous things, but it does uh, leave as time goes on. So, uh, as you can see here, when I was diagnosed, I was in the US, that's uh, Mount Rose, 10,000 feet snowshoeing. To be in a doctor's two days later and being told that you've got chronic myeloid leukemia uh, fairly took you off the mountain to say the least. Moving forward, uh, 2014, I had my stem cell transplant and just a, a short time ago there I was climbing up Mount Coulomb. So I wasn't quite getting back to 10,000 feet, Mount Coulomb's about 900 feet. But <laughs> We're working on it, and it was quite an effort, but for me it was a big milestone. My sister was my donor, and I'm one of four kids. So if you were to meet my brother, if he was here today, my younger one, similar buff head, same characteristics, you would have thought for sure that we would have been a match, but we weren't. No one else in the family is um, a, a tissue match, just my sister and myself. And I guess if someone was to get the condition in the family, I was the best place, because I was single and I didn't have those responsibilities that the rest of my um, family had. Uh, one of the things that was asked of Doc Morton about the consequences of the uh, donor, uh, after the uh, transplant for the donor, it's pretty hard to thank her for what she's done for me, but I uh, made sure that she got at least two hours in one of the spas near uh, the hospital to go and relax and get a massage. She did feel a little bit of a fluey type symptom, but she's fine today and hasn't missed a beat. So uh, the bottom photo was the day we got discharged out of uh, Ward 5C. It was a very hot summer in 2014. I can't include every nurse to thank, but this is just a snapshot of how wonderful they are. In the background of all these slides, as Tommy mentioned, you pass over your body to the doctors, but you've got to find a way of controlling your mind. So there's always good things to think about in the background. Don't take your eye off those things. Uh, funny story, Doc Morton there in the middle. Yes, I did buy him the shirt. Uh, throughout the whole process, I used to wear my Okanui shirt uh, for several reasons. One, I didn't want to be looking drab going into treatment rooms. It can be pretty uh, depressing places at times. And I thought, if you're dressing a little bit brighter, it shows that you've got a good outlook and it can boost other people. Of course, Doc Morton used to give me a bit of a hard time. So every Friday, I would wear the same shirt. So eventually, I said, I know how I'm going to thank you. I'm going to buy you one of these shirts. <laughs> good soul that he is. That was actually taken on Good Friday. And this is a guy that gives up his time for your patients because everything that happens to you, as the uh, Leukemia Foundation have programs, it's all about me. And it's hard to accept that but everything is done for you in this process. You are so supported, it is absolutely amazing and humbling. The other couple of photos at the top, uh, that your relationships with all sorts of providers are very important. Uh, the lady up in the top left is my GP, the most wonderful person for taking an active interest in what's going on in me and genuinely keeping in touch with Dr. Morton and keeping up with all the medications and what have you. Of course, as Tommy knows too, you are introduced to more medications than you ever thought possible. And the people that are at my local pharmacy are the most wonderful ladies. They are so supportive. Uh, I would go in there probably at least once a week. And in the early days, you're constantly filling out scripts. And I'll say more about that uh, in a minute. 
Uh, some of you might not know Dr. Taylor. Uh, he was my initial haematologist for many years and then referred me on to Dr. Morton. Carers, you, you can't thank them enough for what they do. And you need a carer 24 7 in this process. Not because you can't look after yourself physically, you can, but with the fatigue levels, uh, just sometimes having a shower can you know, knock you flat. You need probably half an hour lay down in the early stages. The bloke on the bottom right is a colleague of mine from work. He's completely the opposite to me in every regard, except for one. He was diagnosed with AML and he had a transplant 15 years ago. And I like to talk about those sort of numbers because that's very reassuring. Whereas I'm a bit of a worrier about blood results and all the rest of it, he never had a care in the world, at least that's the way he carries on to me. And I say, so what medications are you on now, Ross? No, I don't know. I just take whatever they script for me. I said, well, what about your creatinine levels? No, what are they? You know, he has a complete disregard, and yet he's living life to the fullest. He was in Mexico earlier this year. Uh, he's been to Canada and other places, and he was there day plus five in the hospital visiting me. The guy next to that is a basketball teammate. I've known Pato since we were 13. For some strange reason, he also developed a blood cancer, and he had an autologous stem cell transplant about six years ago. The point being is that having mentors to be able to be on this journey with you and tell you what's coming ahead and what have you uh, is so supportive. The other fella that's prominent there is a neighbour of mine, Dougal. Uh, another rugby tragic, and we get together quite often. But the level of support he gave me throughout this process was amazing. And just to share one short story, I'd been home three weeks, and I live on my own, so I'm kind of, you know, self-sufficient to say the least, but he was always keeping an eye out for me. I went out for an hour to go and get breakfast somewhere, and when I came back, my unit was flooded. I'm on, on a ground floor unit. This much water across the entire unit. He rallied the troops, and sure enough, he was there to help me, and I basically just had to sit back while they cleaned up the whole unit. And we're talking about ripping up the carpet and all the rest of it. It was quite catastrophic. My point being, you can't underestimate how many people will care for you and support you on this journey. And you'll never be able to thank them, but they know that you appreciate it, and you also know that if you were in a similar situation, you would do the same for them. That level of reciprocity doesn't quite hack it, but you do look for ways to get even with him. Suffice to say he's had more than one or two bowls of scotch, <laughs> courtesy of me. Another example, uh, the lady up in the left, she was my boss in Darwin 20 years ago, now living in Canberra. She heard about what I was going through, she'd worked for the Department of Health as well, and she came up not once but on two occasions to spend a week for me. She insisted. Um, wonderful, wonderful person. Okay, I and mean, I could go on and on about all the others. Now, in World 5C, there's always a team of doctors there, and they're always looking after you, and every decision they make is for your safety and your well-being. Um, one of the nurses reassured me. She said, Paul, you know, you're really in the best place in the world because you're getting the best care possible for this process. And that is absolutely true. I think the best bit of advice that I was given on this whole journey was just take one day at a time. Just one day at a time. And they talk about if you're worried about the future, it'll create a lot of anxiety. If you're just enjoying the moment and dealing with what's on your plate at the time, it really helps you get through. Uh, the nurses prepare a little certificate on the day of your transplant just as a happy birthday because you've got a new birthday. Uh, mine's now on the 31st of January. Uh, it's not a great photo, but there on the day up in the top corner was when I was getting my sister's stem cells. Medication, this is taken from being in hospital. You can see that cup's fairly full of an assortment of, and it gets replenished many times a day. For the patients going through it, don't skimp on your medication, and try and work with whoever is going to be your carer to get a good plan of when you're taking your medications. And furthermore, think ahead to know when your scripts need to be filled. Because Murphy's Law, you might run out of something and it's going to be a long weekend. 
And uh, if there isn't a doctor around to re-script you, you're going to be in a little bit of bother. Now, a few tips. One of the things that Doc Morton mentioned was one of the conditions of mucositis, where you get sores in your mouth. And whilst it doesn't last long, it can be quite awful to deal with. In the lead up to getting your uh, stem cell transplant, you go through a process of screening. One of them is they look at your dental hygiene. They say keep your mouth clean as possible and mouthwash at least four times a day. I was doing it eight times a day and I was using the Biotin products. And I'm not paid by Biotin for this endorsement, uh, but I didn't get any mouth problems. Now, every person that goes down this pathway, uh, it's an individual journey. And just because it didn't happen to me doesn't mean to say it won't happen to you. What I'm saying is it worked for me and it's worth a shot uh, for you to do that as well. <coughs> The Hickman line is the most wonderful device because everything goes in and out of your system through that. There's no getting cannulas anymore. And we know that when you're getting cannula, you put up with it and you tolerate it. But when you look at trying to minimise the risk of infection, it's really important to have as few cannulas as you can. It's just a site and you just get uh, education from the staff and the nurses how to look after it but don't fear having one because it, it does, you don't feel anything from it. They take blood, give you medication, all the rest of it. Down the bottom, because your IV trolley is your best friend for quite some time, uh, you can inadvertently kick it, which happened to me on one occasion, and you don't want any injuries because if you've got a, a, a cut or something, then the risk of infection increases. I found that the crocs that I had were really good because they're really lightweight for walking around the ward and you do want to walk around the ward as much as you can, as soon as you can. But it gave you that extra level of protection just to minimise accidents. Um, I found having uh, an iPad was good for me and also some headphones just because uh, Tommy used yoga and meditation. I, used, I like, uh, used a lot of Reiki self-treatment. So it's really focusing on that mental side to stay calm throughout the process. And a friend of mine gave me a bit of decoration for the room and you can decorate your ward any way you like. Uh, and it just says, think happy thoughts. And it was, uh, it was good advice. So a few of my tips. Just take one day at a time. Uh, it's body versus mind. You're handing your body over to the doctors and the professionals and they'll look after that with, uh, at all costs. But it's up to you to find a way to cope with it mentally. And there's a lot of support around from the foundation and also in the hospital for that. The time factor is one that's a bit hard to adjust to. If you get a headache, uh, you'll take a Panadol and usually within about 20 minutes your headache's gone. Now, this process doesn't work that way. Things are very slow very slow indeed. But when you look back, it's amazing how far you come in a matter of months. But just look at the, be patient. You will be fatigued, but it doesn't mean to say you can't stay in good spirits. And you will get grumpy from time to time, but you want to make life bearable for your carers. Uh, you don't have to dump anything, everything on them, and there's a lot of help with the Leukemia Foundation about that. Stay positive. Uh, Laughter is good medicine. Uh, in my recovery, I watched a lot of DVD comedies. I don't know how many times I watched that Ricky Gervais one down at the uh, Clem Jones Village, but very helpful. Do as your health professionals tell you to do. Don't introduce variables. One of the things that I love to eat is sashimi. One of the things I'm not allowed to eat is sashimi, so I won't go out and eat sashimi. Why? Because it has a problem with the tacrolimus and the GVHD. As to what causes that problem, I don't know, but I have enough trust in Doc Morton in particular, to just do as I'm told. Don't suffer in silence. If you've got any questions, ask them. If you've got any niggling injury or pain or something that's going wrong because you'll be so attuned to your body, speak up and let them know. Because that stoicism may be an undoing for you. So speak up, talk about it. It might be nothing, it might be something. They're the experts, let them decide. They're the custodian of your body for the time being, but you need to give them feedback. Take it easy. Be easy on yourself. 
I remember on one of the early lessons the hard way, I went shopping with my brother um, at about, I don't know, day 45 or something, and it was a hot day. By the time we got to the shopping centre, just riding in the car, I was absolutely exhausted. And it took me about three days just to recover. So don't try and do too much too soon. Just take it easy. Um, and the other thing, don't panic if you need to be readmitted in hospital. Uh, as you'll see in the video, quite some down time down the road, I developed shingles and GVHD, so I had to be readmitted. But I had the reassurance that that was OK because that's all part of the process. Um, so, as I say, don't panic. The other thing, I just want to give a huge thank you to all the wonderful people of the Leukaemia Foundation. That level of support of what they provide for accommodation, and the list is huge, is just magnificent. So, this photo was taken uh, just recently. I had a trip down to Tasmania, and uh, some of you may be familiar with Wine Glass Bay. It's like climbing, a, the ranger told me, he said, it's like climbing a 30-storey building. And uh, when you've been through this process, it's a bit of a guts effort to get up there. And plenty of breaks and huffing and puffing. But for me, that was a big milestone to be able to get up there. And uh, we might play the, uh, the video diary. So today is day plus seven, and uh, the resolve today was to be able to spend less time in bed, which I've done, and to eat more. I uh, feel a bit washed out today, it was a real good sleep, but shortly I'll have a few hours off the IV as they change my lines, and that's always something to look forward to. So uh, pretty soon we will be in under the shower for uh, a good shower with no lines and machines attached to me to worry about. And it's one of those days where you feel pretty for it. And I thought, well, may as well do the video for today showing resting up. Doctors continue to be happy. Uh, I guess it's just taking one of those tolls for a bit of exhaustion. But we hang in there. Blood count's still down to zero. Probably remain that for a few days yet before we see some changes. And uh, overall, things are still going quite well. I'm just tired. No better place to be tired than in bed. And this bed's quite comfortable. Yesterday I had my head on the pillow most of the day. Today's been much the same. Uh, at the moment, I'm wondering to see if there's going to be a temperature spike. Uh, temperature's been hovering around 37.9. Uh, 38 is the trigger temp for putting up antibiotics and getting blood screened and what have you. Uh, overall feeling pretty pretty fatigued. It's day past 12 and uh, as you can see a bit perkier today. Um, it might be too early to tell as to whether or not there's engraftment but the neutrophils were at 0.02 today. So the doc says nah a bit early but um, there you go. Yesterday I had my last chemo with a methotrexate, left me feeling pretty seedy, very nauseous, but um, that seems to have subsided now, so docs are happy, I'm happy, and uh, we push on. Well, here we are at day 20, and I'm about to go out on my ward leave, finally. Well, it's been a monumental afternoon, because I've had my first ward leave pass. Came home, it was 38 and a half degrees, but managed to... Uh, do the walk up to the unit and had a pretty good sleep this afternoon. Hey well it's day 79 and um, out and about back behind the wheel driving uh, sent Suzette off to the airport dropped her off we'll pick up Margaret Lyons soon uh, terrific carers very much indebted to them and overall progress is good uh, more to come this week well, today's day 109 and about to go in to uh, ICON and hopefully everything works out alright and get the um, Hickman line out and then tomorrow, day 110, be heading home. Hooray! Okay. Time to get going and head back to the Sunshine Coast. It's been a great stay here at the village. 
Uh, no two ways about it. Really wonderful facility. But I am looking forward to getting home. Happy to be back in the office. Um, going well. Yeah. Lots to catch up with on the computer, but uh, big day. And uh, all is good. Well, here it is, day plus 251, and I'm in room 828 of the Mata Private, as I have contracted shingles. And I've just been discharged after having had a week in hospital getting the GVHD underway. I'm pretty happy with the way things are going, and uh, on on. So to all the staff, Dr Morton, especially my sister for making it possible, all my friends for all the support you've given me, all my family, uh, this is really a fantastic moment for me, and uh, yeah, the best is still yet to come.